I want to talk about uh, something that came up on the news this morning. I was alerted to it uh, as I woke up. Um, and it's this. So I'll play this. One of two Islamic primary schools in the country says there's a desperate need for more schools for Muslims. Ikera Elementary School in West Auckland officially opened its new building yesterday, and it was a long awaited day for the school, but as Jesse Chang reports, many Muslim families will have to wait longer to provide their children with an Islamic education. Ikera Elementary School has come a long way since it first started in 2016. Back then, it only had 15 students crammed into a rented room. Fast forward three years, the number of children has ballooned to 130, and their new building in New Lynn has been officially opened by the Governor-General Dame Patsy Reddy. It was a lively ceremony, with the students performing a haka, and also singing an Arabic song. For nine-year-old Samaya Ali, she couldn't have been more thrilled to be at school. I feel really excited because I never went to um, a Muslim school before. When I go to a non-Muslim school, when I want to learn about my um, faith, um, they don't know what I'm talking about and stuff like that. But in um, this school, they can help me out if I need help. In a speech at the ceremony, Bilal Ragood from the Algorithmi Education Trust Board recalled his own experience of growing up in a public school. I was faced with a serious identity struggle. What does it mean to be a young Muslim in New Zealand? How do I live my life in accordance with my religious teachings within an environment that doesn't necessarily understand or appreciate those teachings? This is a struggle that we all went through. The last census in 2013 recorded about 46,000 Muslims in New Zealand. Ikara Elementary's principal, Fatima Zahid, says there is a large Islamic community in Auckland and the need is great for schools that follow the religion. Two is not enough for the population that requires Islamic school. Um, we have a big waiting list and I know that I'm sure other schools will do too. So there are lots of families who want to send their children to Islamic school. But the Mazahid says it's very hard to have to turn away families. We have m many families who want to become part of Ikra. The most disappointing part is that when we actually turn away the families with special needs children. Being in New Zealand with special needs child also makes them somehow vulnerable. And then when we turn them, they think that we are their community and we are their community. So when we turn them away, it's really, really sad and disappointing for us. This hard thing as well. Ikeda Elementary is currently private, but it's in the process of applying to be integrated into the state system. By doing so, it says it will receive more support from the government to grow and help more Muslim children learn about their religion and also become better New Zealand citizens. Itamaki Makoro mo te hōtaka o te atanei ko te si chang tenei. So that's a nice um, feel-good article, um, item, uh, a wonderful bit of state-run propaganda. Um, so apparently young Muslims are suffering in their public schools because it is an, is it an affront to their sensitivities. Well, isn't the public school system failing most young people in New Zealand? Why is it not good enough for them? I know Sri Lankan Buddhists, they send their children to state schools on the whole, where they imbibe the dominant culture, but they also send them to Buddhist Sunday schools to learn their own culture and language. They don't have special schools. Isn't this the way that we've always done things? Isn't that the fair way? Um... How many Indian schools are there? I know there are Chinese language courses aplenty in New Zealand, and on a short search, I found this Chinese school, which is presumably a charter school so beloved by the National Party. And yet, this is all quite low-key. 
And we all know how, and can blame many of us, how dominant Chinese is in our culture. So what is it uh, that makes the Muslims so special? Well, I think I can tell you why. It's got nothing to do with the Muslims. Here it is. It's part of a privileged white liberal response that made feminist women who describe our culture as a rape culture don the hijab for a day after the March 15th attack on the Christchurch mosque that was anything other than what it was portrayed. I've dealt with this sufficiently um, elsewhere. Aren't these the same people going on about Islamophobia and we're all Muslims and the religion of peace that support the bombing of thousands, if not millions, of Muslims in their own countries? This photograph is from Yemen. The people that create a migration problem in Syria and then insist that their citizens take in the migrants and their hundreds of thousands and even millions? Who exactly has given risen to Muslim extremists in the first place, I ask? And it's not this chap. Now, the same mindset that is going to create another problem. They have white supremacists. Apparently, apparently they're everywhere. In our midst, says um, the chap from News Hub, um, who have never been a particular problem until now, somehow it's eluded us, apart from the drugs that they're on. And mostly they're pretty undereducated. But then I have to ask, who's responsible for that? We have a young, alienated youth with no future. And if you keep pushing these people constantly to the margins of society and practically banning them, then you're going to have a big problem. You're going to bring about the very thing that you claim to be avoiding. So how could I possibly reject the idea, conspiracy theory as it is, that this is all by design? After all, how could people be so stupid to create the exact same problems that they claim to be avoiding. Go back to the Muslim schools. I remember a Channel 4 documentary from Britain, now suppressed and relegated to poor quality copies on YouTube, that went inside one of the mosques in Britain. And what came out of this was that while the leaders of the mosque were taking part in interfaith gatherings and uttering all the mantras about tolerance and inclusiveness and were very reasonable, behind their own four walls and in their own language, the imams were spitting out words of hatred that members of other faiths should be killed. But you can't even hint that this might be the case because this will be called hate speech or Islamophobia. So somehow pointing out the hate speech of others is hate speech. I came across an article the other day where a Canadian judge said that a person of colour abusing and even hitting a person was not hate speech. I kid you not. So let's just go on to something else. The dictionary meaning of liberal is, apart from being someone favourable to progress or reform, as in political or religious affairs, and I've spoken about this before, and um, James Howard Kunstler spoke about it the other day very brilliantly, uh, someone favouring the it is someone favouring the freedom of the individual and governmental guarantees of individual rights and liberties. So there you are. I disagree with what you're saying, but I will defend your way to say it was 
until recently, the liberal mantra or motto. So, with all the censorship that we're getting across the board, and I'm getting more and more evidence of that every day, where is that? Where's all that wonderful tolerance? Instead, they turn it into, we're not going to be tolerant of the intolerant. But who's being intolerant? I would say that most of the hate speech, so-called, that is coming out of the lips of the very people casting these aspersions. So what we need is not more liberals or more conservatives, but more radicals. And I mean this in the main dictionary meaning of that's number one, it's at the uh, top um, of getting to the root of things or to their origins, or the fundamental nature of things. Now that is the actual root of the word and not the meaning of uh, being uh, someone who holds strong convictions or extreme principles, an extremist. That's not what uh, radicalism really means. The extremists in our midst if, are, in fact, the liberals. And it's been described as the extreme center. And of this, I'm getting evidence every day. So if you don't in any way agree with the new agenda, you're castigated as extreme right, white supremacist or even fascist, or Nazi. To point out the obvious hypocrisy and double standards invites the same. So, I, for saying this, I will be extreme right, white supremacist, or fascist. We're invited to put Muslims onto a pedestal while we support bombing them in their own countries. So just think of yourselves, or sorry, think of our cousins from the Pacific Islands of Indian Hindus or of the Chinese as I finish off with the following. Um, ask yourself, do they uh, enjoy the same amount of attention as this? And I'm just going to have to find the actual things. Uh, I apologize. Mm -hmm. So this, or this, or even this. So, I'm sick and tired of being forced into the corner of so-called alt-right or so-called far-right by the extreme ideologues. Quite a long, from a long, cold and radical look at what is actually happening to the planet and its inhabitants, what motivates me, most of all, is opposition to the war that these ideologues are carrying out in our name, and to the liberal lies and double standards, and I try my best to be objective, to the extent I can, damn the people who put forward these ideologies designed at dividing us and attacking each other, and damn you, damn you,